Chapter 4 takes on discrete distributions which arise in practice and we have hit the first of those discrete distributions which is the Bernoulli distribution. This is the second of the distributions which is the binomial distribution. Arguably the binomial distribution is the best known of all the discrete distributions. Here is the setup. When n Bernoulli trials are conducted, each with an identical probability of success p, the experiment is known as a binomial random experiment. So here is the definition of a binomial random experiment. It satisfies the following criteria. First of all, the random experiment consists of n identical trials. n will be set ahead of time and it is a fixed positive integer. Second of all, there are two possible outcomes for each trial. Those two outcomes are generically re referred to as success and failure. Third, the trials are mutually independent. That is to say, the outcome on one trial does not influence the outcome on another trial. And the probability of success on each of the Bernoulli trials is identical. When you have those four assumptions, then in that case, if you let x be the number of successes in the n independent Bernoulli trials, each of which has a probability of success p, where n is a positive integer, then you can say that x is distributed as a binomial random variable with parameters n and p. The next thing we'd like to do is determine the support of x and if you think about n Bernoulli trials each one can be a success which is a 1 or a failure which is a 0 and if you add up the number of successes the number of successes could range from 0 and of course 0 is all failures no successes all the way up to n and n would be all of those Bernoulli trials being successes. The next thing we'd like to do is we would like to determine the probability mass function f of x for this particular random variable and the probability of x successes and n minus x failures in a specific order is let me go ahead and draw n positions here. Let's say this first Bernoulli trial turns out to be a success. Well that occurred with probability p. And let's say the second one is also a success. That occurs with probability p. What if the third one is a failure? That would occur with probability 1 minus p. Then maybe a success with probability p all the way down to a failure at the very end with probability 1 minus p. Well, what is the probability of this specific string of successes and failures? Well, if there are x successes, then there have to be n minus x failures. And if you lay them out in a specific order like this, there will be p raised to the x power and 1 minus p raised to the n minus x power multiplied together as the probability of this particular string of successes and failures. Now that does not give you the probability of exactly x successes because this is only one specific order. If I then take this probability and I multiply it by n choose x and you can think of that as taking these successes and placing them in x different positions amongst the n then in that case you have reflected the different ways of selecting the x positions for the x successes. This leads to the following definition. We now have a probability mass function which we have derived here and it is as follows. A discrete random variable x with probability mass function f of x equals n choose x times p to the x times 1 minus p to the n minus x for support x equals 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n, and that is your support. For some positive integer n, 
and P, the probability of success on each individual Bernoulli trial between 0 and 1 is known as a binomial random variable with parameters N and P.